sometimes I have this intuition about a specific idea that I just know going to be awesome, like really awesome. And today I have an idea just like that. We are going to make the world's largest plywood gears. Okay, so world's largest plywood gears. I mean, why and how? And how can you help? Let's begin with why exhibit A, the original marble machine. On this machine, there was a lot of things that failed, but the gears weren't one of them. The gears that we see here performed perfectly. 264 million views, that's pretty good. <laughs> There's something with plywood gears, okay? <laughs> exhibit B, the marble machine X, also plywood gears. Of all the problems I had with Marmachin X, no problems with the plywood gears. And look at them, they're just magnificent and beautiful, right? <music> Exhibit C, Matthias Vandal's how to make gears video. For me, this is where like my journey with this began. So I do want to make a Renaissance marble machine. This machine fits perfectly to be created in wood. To make these gears in wood, would just sell the whole Leonardo da Vinci renaissance thing. On my previous machines, I did normal spur gears, just like Wilson, with straight tooth. And while those are great, I have a new favorite gear, which is a double helical gear. So what I wanna do is to make double helical gear in plywood. So you can see that the teeth here are angled. I am not aware of anyone who have done double helical gears in plywood. It seems likely that no well-documented examples of double helical gears made from plywood exist online. We would be the first. My lust of creating these is enormous. These gears gets me up in the morning. I get so happy from them. Wouldn't it be much better to use timing belts and pulleys? or these beautiful metal helical gears. If we would make gears this big in metal, it would be so heavy. And then also timing belts. Timing belts are great. It's not fun to look at. It's just not cool to look at. And I'm just not saying that, I have an example for you. This is a video from an engineering company, DMG Mori, who have built a marble machine with five axis CNC machining. So they have the cool flip-flop uh, marble divider there. And I think this machine showcases my whole point. I think this company actually emailed me for permission. I just say, go ahead. I mean, this is cool, all the parts, super cool. One, two, three, 14 people unpacking the parts. I mean, I'm super impressed by what they've done, that they like made this project. And here comes the cool gears and stuff. Wait, there's two screens of sponsors. We have a bevel gear, we have a chain. We never, there's no sound in this video. So cool gears, but they're filmed too close so we don't see them. Marbles, nice, some kind of marble lift. Oh, it's a wave marble lift, that's cool. Oh, magnets, they used magnets, <laughs> which is kind of fun. And programming pins, beautiful, beautifully machined. Here's some marbles hitting. Wow, what a machine. Let's see how many views it has. 9,000. 9,000. Should we check how many views the plywood gears have? I'm just gonna check here. Marble machine. Let's check this video. 264 million. <laughs> I actually love this project, this machine from DMG Mori. Well done, kudos to you. And there's an apple and some pear situation here because they didn't try to do what I'm trying to do. They tried to showcase their five axis uh, CNC machining capabilities, which they did. And I'm trying to do something else. I'm trying to feel alive inside. <laughs> you know when Bruce Springsteen shouts, is there anyone alive out there? Yes. Yeah, because I'm gonna make double helical plywood gears, okay? When I have this like enthusiasm, that has never gone wrong. I mean, no, the first machine didn't work. That went wrong in a way. The second machine didn't work either. But reminder, it wasn't the gears fault actually. So this machine is my last exhibit about why I wanna make gigantic plywood gears. <laughs> So that's why, now I wanna tell you how I'm planning to make these new gears. Step one, cutting the profiles. We start with a CNC machine. Then we start to manufacture all these profiles. So there we go, these are the profiles. Step two, making the assembly jig. We're gonna make a straightening gluing up jig. This time we have some MDF, 
we have another MDF, and then we do some machining operation. We do these cut downs. We're gonna use these T nuts. We're gonna put these T nuts in all these holes. Flip the MDF with our X ray vision. You can see the T nuts underneath there. So, next step, we're cutting these alignment holes, and then something important we CNC these flats. All the blue areas here now is CNC perfect. Step three, glue up. Now we can start assembling our gear. We start with the wooden pegs and now we can start with the first layer. So here's the first layer in the middle and then I start with the segments just putting them on piece by piece around the entire circle. We have our first layer, we add glue and we put the second layer on and then we start with the spokes. This whole layer is with spokes. Another layer of spokes, yet another layer of spokes. This is 18 millimeter plywood, Baltic Birch BB high grade quality plywood. This is not your typical construction plywood. This is like the best plywood there is. Another layer here and the final layer. At this step, the precision is not important. The flatness is a bit important. So that's why I'm going to clamp this with M10 bolts. So we're lowering these M10 bolts down and they are meeting the T-nuts underneath. But what's cool with these M10 bolts is that we can actually clamp with a torque wrench. So we can apply the exact same amount of pressure evenly across the whole glue up. The glue up is ready and we just leave this to dry like overnight or something. Step four, machining the center bore. We just made a plywood structure with no precision so far, but here's where the precision comes in. So we go in the middle and we're gonna machine a new center hole with a CNC machine. We made this hole underside, so we turn a small hole to a precise larger center bore. We're gonna machine in a flat here. So then we know that this flat area is precise together with the center bore. The blue surfaces does not need the glue up to be precise. We add the precision after the glue up. Okay, but how do we add a metal shaft precisely to the plywood? Well, we're using a metal hub. So we add a metal hub to the plywood and then we clamp it on with some bolts and then we're using a standard off the shelf part from SKF, the tapered bushing. When we turn the gear around, we can see that we have yet another tapered bushing on the other side. So now the shaft is in its place. Now we have the first point of precision in the shaft in the middle of this plywood blank. But the outside has no precision whatsoever and it doesn't need yet. Step five, machining the gear teeth. We're gonna take the plywood blank to a rotary CNC machine. In the rotary machine, we're gonna use the fact that the shaft is precise to put the gear in a rotary axis. And then what we can do is that then we can machine the gear teeth. So here we're cutting the gear teeth, et voila, we have cut the gear teeth. This thing is spinning around and a CNC spindle is cutting from above or from the side somehow, which means that the gear will be very precise. Not at all what I managed before. And remember when I CNC'd 2D, these gears worked. This will have much better precision. So yeah, that's how I plan to make these gears. And the axle and the teeth will have this precise relationship that is independent of the gluing up. We can make small ones and it's just going to be so cool. I noticed that the double helical gears I built for my 3D printer, when I had very low precision putting the gear train together on my prototypes, they kind of just worked super smooth, thanks to one thing, backlash. I'm not talking about the backlash that I'm gonna get from this video, no, no, no. I'm talking about the backlash measurement of a gear. What is backlash? Let's pretend my fingers are gears, like this. If I put them really tight, we have zero backlash. But if I open my fingers, we have some space between the gears. That is backlash and we can use it to our advantage. In my helical gear generator that I'm using, there's a backlash option here. Backlash, a positive value here causes each tooth to be slightly narrower than the ideal tooth. In the real world, having a perfect tooth is not often desired. It is better to build in a little backlash to reduce friction 
allow room for lubricant between teeth and to prevent jamming, especially if you make gears from a material that can shrink and expand, right? We'll get to that later. So let's illustrate this. I have two small helical gears here. So largest teeth, smaller, smaller again, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. So here you can see the three different versions I made of this gear with different backlash. And if we put two gears together, this is the largest version. You can see that it's quite tight here for, for the gear tooth. But what happens if we introduce some backlash? Look at all that space. If we go to the smallest, you can see that we have a lot of room. If I would make the gears from, let's say, aluminium or from Delrin, which are super dimensionally stable, we could have a smaller backlash. But a small backlash also puts high demand that the axles are perfectly parallel and that the distance between the center hubs is perfect, perfect. What happens when we introduce a little bit of space between the gears is that all those constraints, all those requirements gets lightened up. It's basically much easier to get the gears to mesh in a nice way. Would I recommend this for a gearbox in a car? No, the RPMs, the revolutions are much faster, the forces are much stronger, but this is a light force, low RPM application where the backlash can be allowed to be huge, which eats up in precision. Let's also talk about humidity and the dimensional stability of BB grade high quality birch plywood. Wood will expand when the moisture in the wood goes up and shrink when the moisture goes down. The strength of plywood is that the layers are glued in opposite direction. Every layer you have the fibers going the opposite way. This makes plywood much more dimensionally stable than normal wood. Dimensional change is generally less than 1%, which is still quite a lot of movement for something as precise as a gear. What can we do about this? Well, we can try to control the humidity that the marble machine is in. This is a common thing for all music instruments like guitars and uh, violins and stuff. But for example, when we play an outdoor festival in front of 70,000 people and it's raining and they still turn up because we're, they know the show is great, <laughs> we won't be able to control the humidity. So I think we have to design the marble machine to allow for the humidity to change. And then we can actually treat the plywood. Lacquer and varnish, wood oils, epoxy sealant. So in conclusion, we always need to account for the humidity, but we can improve it by sealing the plywood and using great plywood and allowing for the design with some backlash to allow for some movement. I think all those actions together makes plywood a feasible material to make huge gears from. So we talked about why plywood gears and how I'll make them. And now I wanna talk about how you can help me in this project. I want to make the prototype as soon as humanly possible. I don't have a workshop yet here in Stockholm that can do that. So in the link in the description, I'm looking for Metal Hub design feedback, Metal Hub machining. I'm also looking if someone has a flatbed CNC machine set up close to Stockholm, then I'm looking for a rotary CNC machining. And then I'm looking for partnering with a flatbed CNC machine company for the entire Marble Machine 3 project. And I'm also looking for a partnership with a rotary CNC machine company and I'm super happy for all your help and even more I'm happy for 902 total Wintergatan backers and you are all helping me making Marble Machine 3. Thank you and a huge thanks to the new backers Adrian, Alex, Alexander, Asko, Chris, Dan, Daniel, Dennis, Eduardo, Eric, Freak, John, Jordan, Kelly, Kerry, Christoph, Leandro, Malte, Marcus, MC, Mary Mary Mead, Niels, Phil, Peter, Prof Holly, Radio Active Magic, Raphael, Rueda, Roman, Steve, Squishy Brain, Gawain, Tahoon, and Tim. Thank you for choosing to support Wintergatan. That means so much. And thanks to all previous backers as well. So 902, can we get to a thousand? That would be so much fun. If we reach thousand backers, I'll make the gears out of metal. No, I won't. Never. Wilson always had a bad attitude. He's been so obnoxious since he learned that I'm returning to plywood gears. I believe. Not again, Wilson, <laughs> come on. Can you see that Delrin Wilson is just paying attention and standing nicely? I'll see you in the Google Forms, right? I'm going to withdraw to my chambers. 
and uh, I'm thanking you so much for watching, and um, especially for all your answers in the Google Forms. See you in the next one. Ciao.